Hi, welcome back to episode number two of PTC Edits Your Photos. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and today we're going to work with Ferdinand Hartman's photo. And this is actually a composite that Ferdinand sent in, and he's having some issues with lighting, and he wants to know how we can make it perfect. I don't know if you can make anything perfect, but we can definitely improve on it. So why don't I jump into the PSD and get right to it? So right off the bat, we see a really big problem that I think we can fix, and it will vastly improve your composite. So if I simply create a black and white adjustment layer on top of everything else, it makes the image black and white. And right away, you'll notice that your main character here, Sarah, stands out. She's way brighter than everything else around her. You can see that she's sitting on the window here, and that area is way darker than the rest of her body. And she's much brighter. So that really wouldn't happen in the real world. So we would need to fix that. So why don't we do that? We'll go into this sarah group and let me see what you have in here oh wow you have a lot of layers that are creating that effect okay so it looks like originally she was brighter so you did darken her up so that's pretty good since you have so many layers going on here and these shadow layers going on what i'll do instead of what i was thinking is just work on top of the sarah group so on top of that i'm just going to make it easy on ourselves and i'm going to create a levels adjustment layer I'm going to set the blending mode to luminosity, not to affect the hue and saturation when we adjust the layer. And the reason that we're making it black and white is because I want to see this composite without any color. And if I can make the black and white composite look good, then the color versions will look good as well. Start by pressing Ctrl Alt G on Windows, Command Option G on the Mac to make a clipping mask so that this adjustment layer only affects the layer below. And then we can adjust the white output level, which means that we're going to change how bright the brightest pixel on this layer is. If I drag it to the left, it will no longer be white. It will now be this shade of gray. Then I can adjust the midpoint slider to add a little bit of contrast. See that? Just by making those tiny adjustments, we were able to make a big difference in the composite. See how she just looks so much more realistic there? So if I disable the black and white adjustment layer, you can see the results. I'm actually going to right click on this layer and make it red so that it's easier for me to see when I'm scrolling up and down. But anyway, so notice the before and the after. Much, much better. Now you have a second problem that we need to address and let me show you how to check for that. If I create a solid color fill layer, make it any shade of gray, the brightness doesn't really matter. And I got lucky here, I got 50%. I wasn't intending on it, but there it is. Anyway, as long as you have a hue and saturation of zero, you'll be fine and press OK. And if you change the blending mode to luminosity, then all the colors below that will have the same luminosity and you can really see what colors are found in the composite. It's really hard to see, so you will need to create a hue and saturation adjustment layer, saturate it, and you'll see the result. See that? See how there's a lot of blue all over this image. The only hot colors are back here where the sun is and some of the reflections. But notice your main character, Sarah. She is red and magenta, whereas everything else around her is blue. So that really wouldn't happen in the real world. So what you need to do is go back down and we'll just make it easy on ourselves. There's much better color correction techniques, but I think that in this case, we can get away with an easy one. So I'm just gonna go into the color balance adjustment layer. And the reason that I chose this adjustment layer is because we can clearly see the colors on the sliders and we can just go from tone to tone and adjust it accordingly. So we'll start with the midtones. And I can drag the cyan slider to the left to add more cyan in the midtones. Again, make sure that you clip it to the layer below so that you only affect your model's layer. I'll click on this icon to reset it and start from scratch. So watch the change here. See that? See how she's getting bluer? And I can do the same thing with the yellows. Click and drag to the right to make it more blue like so. And then I could add maybe a little bit of green. And I can do the same thing for all the different tones. Reduce reds to add cyan, increase the blues like so. And I think I'm missing the highlights. Yeah, sure enough, I am. And I can just adjust it accordingly. So with these minor adjustments, it now looks more like she belongs there. And obviously this is not the perfect color adjustment, but I think it'll be good enough for what I'm trying to show you here. So I'll disable these two layers and you can see the result there. So let me disable that layer before and after. And obviously you might want to come in here and fine tune the image. I'm not 100% happy with my results, but I could come back here. Probably in the shadows is probably where I have the biggest issue. Maybe 
adjust it so it's not so blue. Maybe reduce the reds a little bit. You get the idea. And maybe add a little bit of green. I see too much magenta in there. So something like that before and after. The point is, is that you need to make sure that the ambient colors that she should be in are also applied into the composite. But overall, I think that you did a really good job. The one thing I would consider adding is your model's reflection on the ground. And again, I think I'll go for the EC method, but I think it'll work. So what I'll do here is select your group and these adjustment layers. You can select them by holding shift as you click on them and then press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate those layers. And while they're selected, press Control E on Windows, Command E on the Mac to merge them into one layer. And I'm going to press Control T, Command T to transform, right click and flip vertical. That will flip her upside down and I can come down here and place her right there. I'm also going to click and drag her reflection layer below the Sarah group layer. And what you need to do now is make sure that her shoes are touching to make it realistic. And you can do so by going into edit, puppet warp, and just create these pins so they don't move the rest of the image. And then you can create one here and one here and then click and drag her over there. So it looks like the foot, it's touching the way it should, something like that. And you're not going to get it perfect, but this is way better than not having a reflection or having a reflection like I had it originally. And in some cases, you may need to click on a pin, hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and click and drag to rotate that pin and try to match it better. And I think this looks fairly convincing. Obviously, like I said, not perfect, but it can definitely fool the eye. I'll click on the check mark to commit the changes and I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And what I'll do now is I'll try to match the reflections that are already in the scene. As you can see, everything is so blurry. So I'm going to go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur and make sure that you give it a really big blur to match everything else. I think 22 might be good in this case. So I'll press OK. And that is what that reflection looks like. From here, you can either reduce the opacity like so. Or you can try one of the blending modes and see if any of them give you a good result. Maybe overlay or soft light. To be frank with you, in this case, I'll probably stick to normal and I think that this will work. One thing that I would do, however, is double click to the side of the layer and use the blend diff sliders to make sure that the shadows here come through. So I'll hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and click and spread these apart just to make sure that the reflection wouldn't make these dark areas brighter. So make sure that you use blend diff to correct that issue. I'll double click on the hand tool and maybe even reduce the opacity. And there you go, Ferdinand. It's not perfect, but we definitely improved on it a lot. If you have any suggestions for Ferdinand, make sure that you leave them down in the comments below. And if you would like for me to check out your PSD, then check out the link below in the description. All the information is there. And of course, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, make sure that you subscribe and that you click on that notification button so that you don't miss any future Photoshop tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next video.